Welcome to the French Dream Man channel. I'm your host Robert Sherwood and I want to teach you guys how to build a roof runoff system that'll keep out the roots. I see this all the time. The guys said, hey, why don't you take this piece of pipe plugged full solid of roots and explain to everybody how it happened, why it happens, and how to avoid it. In this video, we're going to show you the only way you can beat tree roots. We're going to give you every single detail that you need to know so that you can run a roof runoff system that the trees will not take out. Now we have a really shallow sprinkler line right here. Remember that because we're going to come back to this and we're going to talk more about that. Meanwhile, I want to teach you guys how to successfully run a roof runoff system around trees. These trees have roots that go out as far as their canopy. To give you an idea on distance, you're going to typically be running 50 feet away from a tree. Sometimes you could go as far as 75 feet on these really large trees. You have to look at the canopy and the structure because they need that much root system to support such a large canopy. All right, let's take a look at the piece of drainage system that the guys cut out. So you can see that the tree roots just filled the drain system. This is a roof runoff system. I'm gonna to explain to you how the roots found their way into this system. I'm gonna to explain to you how to avoid it. This happened during the removal. We had to completely rip out an underground downspout system and replace it. So somebody's hard earned money was just wasted. So they took the sawzall, they just cut the pipe. They had to cut it out in pieces, but as you can see, it's just full of root. You're not jetting that out. It's just full solid of roots. We see this all the time. I'm gonna to explain to you why this happens how it happens, and how you can avoid it. In my 35 years as a contractor, I've seen failure. We've had to replace so many failed roof runoff systems, and I wanted to figure out what it was that took out all these different roof runoff systems. What was I going to have to do differently, and how could I make it better? Over the years, we perfected what we needed to do to beat these big trees, we have it perfected, and we've been doing it for many years, and I'm going to share that with you. What happens when you don't build your system to deal with the tree roots and shrub roots? So this underground downspout system, it had a lot of joints, a lot of connections, and that's where the roots got in. We, we broke it, pulling this out of the ground. We cut this with our sawzall. So you can just see it's just full solid with roots. You're not gonna jet this out. What happens, the roots get in right at the joints, right at the connections. Look at this. Look how big that root is that we had to cut. Now notice how there's one piece of pipe being ran from the driveway all the way to the downspout on the back of the house. I want you to really focus on that because that's extremely important. We're gonna to continue to show you this system and everything we did to beat those tree roots. We have a really long main run here. I'm gonna show you the full main run. I'm gonna show you the full length of distance. We're far in the backyard to get far away from all those tree roots. We go all the way up to the driveway where the first downspout is connected. Then we have the second downspout on the back of the house. We have them both on the same main pipe running far into the backyard, and we're taking that out to a pop-up. Now we're going to connect them, and I'm going to show you how to connect them because this is key. You want to go ahead with a Y, and you want to go ahead and tape it with some super sticky, super stretchy 200-year tape. You can see here we're using some really good plumbing tape. This is the only thing that roots cannot penetrate. You're not jetting this out. This system, there's nothing more you can do for a system like this when the roots fill it, with the exception of rip it out and replace it. From the back pop-up all the way up to that Y fitting is one piece of pipe. Then there's another piece of pipe from that Y fitting to that downspout leaf filter. There's a third piece of pipe that goes up to the top of the driveway. 
Now we're going to show you this final connection. This is really important. Always tape the main line first, and then that way you can easily get a really good seal on that Y fitting. Because we used single wall corrugated pipe that comes in 100 foot rolls, we were able to run a pipe with no seams, no glue joints on this pipe. You don't have to glue it every 10 feet. Now soil shrinks during the drought season and that pulls on pipe and it cracks glue joints. That's why PVC pipe is terrible for downspouts. We run single wall corrugated pipe and we minimize the amount of connections now here at the pop-up, we have a three inch piece of corrugated pipe that we're connecting to a four inch short 90. We wanna be able to reach in and get the tree seeds out with these big trees. Now we have a special fitting that takes the three inch corrugated pipe to a four inch PVC fitting. We drilled holes in the pop-up 90 and we're gonna put pea stone around it because we do not want it to hold water. The tree roots will sniff out that water and they'll try to penetrate this pop-up. We're gonna set it up to where the water leaches away after a rain now back to that shallow sprinkler line because we're using three inch corrugated pipe we're able to go underneath that shallow sprinkler line now if this was four inch corrugated pipe or four inch anything you would have a belly right here because you'd have to go so much deeper with the four inch pipe a four inch pipe displaces 56 percent more area so you can't do that with a four inch pipe that line would have had to been cut out and rerouted if you found any of this information helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports our channel. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until the next video.